How's it going everybody? Trick Trick here and today we're gonna be talking about perks and gems. Um, a lot of people are still, it's still having difficulties on you know which one are stackables and which one aren't and it's just that the game doesn't really tell you it's not very clear about that subject so understandable that many people still are confused about gems and perks and that's what we're gonna be talking about today right um, to, for starters, let's, uh, I'm not going to talk about every single perk in the game because there's hundreds of them, uh, you know, including the, the, all of the trade skill ones and, and the fishing ones. We're going to get those out of the way because those, you know, those are not the focus of this video. Uh, instead, I'm only going to talk about uh, the stackable ones and the non-stackable ones. And then I'm going to talk about which, which ones I think are the best stackables at the moment um and i'm also will try to rate them and give you guys possibly the the best explanation about perks and which one are the ones that you want to have as it today um we have different perks we have perks that only you can get them in weapons you have perks that you can only get in accessories and you have perks that you can only get in armor right and obviously like i said you know we we're not gonna count the, the trade skills um <clears throat> For perks that we can get in the weapons, you can get some of them like uh, refreshing move, like light and heavy attacks, you know, that type of perk you would never be able to find it anywhere else. Uh, these are not stackable because again, you can only have it on the weapons and therefore only one weapon, you know, you will have it outside. Um, I don't know if uh, you can use it, uh, you know, with, with sword and shield and maybe they both, uh, you know, will help each other. I'm not a sword and shield wearer, so if you're a sword and shield out there and you have refreshing move on both, could you please uh, clarify that for me? Um, and that one, like I said, is not a stackable one. Then we're going to move to the next one, Unending Thought. Unending Thought, it's an ability perks, and none of the ability perks will ever be able to stack. Meaning that, for, for another example, um, you have here, you see it says Empower and Fireball. Uh, it, it, you know increases the damage of the fireball now that one like I said it's an ability perk meaning that you cannot have empowering fireball anywhere else in your gear you can only have it one per you know per your set and you can have several abilities perk but you cannot have the same perk repeated in in more than one piece of armor that is for the non stackable ones in this case the ability ones like I can have one pillar of fire and I have one fireball that's it i cannot have two fireballs and two pillar of fires now that's because it's not a stackable but you have the stackable ones that we're gonna get in a minute um and then here you also have um enchanted light and heavy attacks deal 9.5 more damage again that only that's only for the weapons so even if you will want to stack that one you wouldn't be able to to stack it um uh, and then i want to talk about what i think are you know very unique and very important perks uh in the game and those are going to be kin and vicious you could only get vicious from weapons you know straight up you cannot get vicious anywhere else you cannot get it in your accessories you cannot get it in your gear you can only get it in weapons king in the other hand critical chance you can get it in only two pieces in the game you can either get it in one of the weapons or you could get it in the ring that's why I would recommend anybody out there, but that is a DPS at least, you know, I don't know how tanks and, and healers, I don't know how they play, therefore I cannot talk on their behalf. But if you are a DPS, you 100% want to have King in your uh, accessory, at least, because, you know, it's, it's 11, 10, 9% that you're gonna have that it, you cannot get it anywhere else. Like for an instance, you know, uh, kin and vicious you, i have it here on my weapon um and it's because like i said before in my previous video i'm, I'm a critical mage right so even if this staff right here had empowering fireball and refreshing pillar of fire which will be a perfect staff right but in reality it isn't i wouldn't take that staff over this one even if it was a, if even if it was a gear score 600 why because empowering fireball and refreshing pillar of fire those are perks that you can get not only on the weapons but you can also get it on your gear and if you can get those perks in you know in all of these here but king you can only get it in a weapon and a ring that's why i will prioritize for you to get 
critical strike or critical damage in your main weapon if you are a person that you know deals crit there are many perks out there that will probably increase your damage more but if you're interested in having crit please 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 remember that only in your weapons you can have crit rate and crit damage and then only on the ring you can have crit rate moving on all right so i went uh uh by the way they stack by the way the the from weapon uh and this two right here they stack now the things that that wouldn't stack it's if you have king in your fire staff and you also have king in your second weapon it's not like you have you know a 20 percent critical rate or 22 whatever if you have 11 11 because remember that the only thing that you get from weapons it's when you have them out it's you get everything but if you if they're a sheath you will only get the attribute in this case if i'm not using my 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 ice gauntlet and i'm using my fire staff the only thing that i will be getting from the ice gauntlet will be the 30 intelligence none of those three perks underneath will affect my my ice gauntlet the same way if i was using ice gauntlet it's not like i have an extra 11 percent crit rate and 11 percent crit damage because again i'm not using that weapon the the percentage from the ring it's always there that one will never go away um so that's why i recommend for you to 100 percent have crit rate in your ring if you are a dps um now we're gonna move to the stackable ones and in the stackable ones uh we we have several right and uh but like i said I, i'm not gonna talk about every single one of them i'm only gonna talk about the ones that i think are the most you know like the best of all hundreds of them especially for combat um uh, for the armor, we have uh, Resilient. That's the first one I want to talk to. Resilient, it's extremely, extremely good. Uh, why? Because, you know, the critical hits, they deal less percent, less damage to you. And as we see, many, many people, including myself, enjoy the, the crit game. You know, the, the crit style, how you crit, it's like that gamble. And I really enjoy some of the classes that go full critical way after always i always enjoy that in video games the critical meta has always been something that i like uh resilient it's it's up there if you are a person a player right that you're constantly in the front line and you're constantly constantly taking hits and you're receiving damage resilient is probably the one that you want that is just straight up possibly the best defensive uh perk out there for pvp and i don't I don't know if mobs they can crit because you know when you get crit you don't see a different color number just the, the, the number is higher or lower if you're critting you see the orange number in comparison to the white no, uh, normal damage but if you get hit you don't know if it was a crit or if it wasn't uh, unless you know exactly how much damage that weapon's dealing to you but that is unrealistic so that's why resilient it's the go-to if you are constantly taking damage the next one I want to talk about uh, the armor, it's um, uh, Vigor. Vigor, it's burn and bleeds and poison expire a little bit faster. This one, it's like in like in the lower side, you know, the spectrum. Uh, I will probably put, if I, if I put Resilient in S tier, I put Vigor probably in, in C tier, right? Because I mean we get burn we you know, we have bleeds and we have poisons But they don't they don't take for that much like it's not like you know We play in another game where some builds are based Just in poisons and then the poison will do lots of damage or you know some other games like wow You have feral druids that they have a lot of bleed damage or or assassination rogues that you know or affliction warlocks that they have a lot of uh you know uh, uh curses and stuff like that this game doesn't have a dot class you know that will be it will wither you away and it will eventually kill you the dots they last uh 15 or odd seconds the one that lasts the most and if you have the 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 the, the food buff you know what you know when you eat your your regular meal the percentage that it gives you back it's almost the same as you know you being ticked away unless you have a bunch of debuff on you so that's why i think that vigor is not that great of a uh, not that great of a perk uh, next we're gonna talk about freedom freedom it's freedom is extremely good and people don't know how good freedom actually is because 
Freedom, it makes slow stunts and silence expire up to 8% faster. Uh, meaning that if you are struggling getting, you know, CC chain, if you're, if you're constantly uh, doing duels out there or having, you know, skirmishes and you're constantly fighting 1v1, freedom will be extremely good. Why? Because if you have at least two freedom perks, that will be at least, uh, 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 you know, 16 to, to uh, I mean, 14 to 16 percent uh, faster that the CC is gonna is gonna wear off on you, and that is enough for a spear use it not to be able to full come with you because by the time they do the sweep and they want to do either the kick or the other one, you get out. It's that little percentage, that 15, 60% of, of getting out of the CC sooner, it makes a huge difference. Especially if you're fighting against a, a Warhammer and they do the shockwave, you know that they usually do the shockwave and then they get behind you and they do a heavy attack or they follow it up with another CC. Well, not if you have two freedoms at least. If you have two freedoms, you can get out of that shockwave before he can even, uh, uh, well, not before he can even, before the heavy attack will land on you. So you, you're able to, to get out and, and get away from, from damage and from those, you know, five, six second CC change that sometimes you get hit by and you're like, oh, that's it, I'm then, you know, they take it from 100 to zero and there's nothing you can do. Uh, Freedom is 100% A tier because it's situational it's only excuse me it's only uh uh if you you know if you get cc uh if you are in the back line and you don't get cc um i wouldn't recommend uh freedom uh over you know refreshing that that's another one that i'm come, gonna come into so if you are in the back line using a lot of abilities not getting hit uh, as often as a front line and if you are not getting constantly CC chain from 100 to zero, then I wouldn't recommend freedom. Only if you're having, you know, those constant duels and you want to get away from those CC. And if, if you're having trouble with that, like me, for example, I don't have that trouble. I, I, I feel like I, get, I can get away from, from the 100 to zeros uh, relatively easy, unless it's like, you know, five people on top of you and then there's nothing you can do because you get hit by CC, CC, CC. And, and all five of them are just smashing on your face and there's absolutely nothing you can do. So freedom is extremely good for, uh, you know, those 1v1 scenarios. Uh, if that's your play style, uh, completely go for it. Uh, then we, we're gonna talk about some of stacks. By the way, these stacks that I just covered, resilient, uh, freedom and vigor, you can only get those on your armor, right? So you can only have up to five of those. Um, so if you, if you want, you can have two freedoms and, and three resilience, the, assuming that you don't want any, you know, ability perk, but if you can have like for for an instance, like on this piece, you know, if you can create something like this, that it has the ability perk that you want and it, then it comes with resilient or, 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 or freedom or vigor, whatever you want, then you, you know, you got yourself right there, a beast piece, uh, just like this one, uh, you see it has the ability, uh, perk and it has the resilient perk. So resilient again, resilient, freedom and vigor. You can only get those in your armor now. And those are stackable. All right. You can stack those five times in your armor, whichever one you want. You can stack three and two. It doesn't matter. Now, the next three that I'm going to talk about, the stackable ones, right, are the evasion ones, which I think this one will be. Uh, so the previous one, they were more into the defensive side of the spectrums. This one will be into the more I wouldn't say offensive, but it just cool down, you know, uh, uh, cool down uh, part of the the fight because that's what it seems like they do. They love cooldowns, uh, reduction because they have, you know, in all your builds something something in 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 the talent tree. It gives you cooldown reduction if you hit them with a heavy attack, if you hit them with a light attack, or why not. So uh, the next one, the the next three perks that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be refreshing refreshing ward and refreshing evasions these are uh really good because uh well at least two of them are one of them is not that much but they are the one that you know reduce more cooldown and these are also stackable and um this you know out of the six that i that i've talked about like i said i'm only focusing in combat i'm not focusing in life skill i'm not focusing on anything else just combat and these ones that i'm talking about are the best ones for combat uh that you can stack 
remember you have other other perks ability perks uh, perks that make you bleed that you cannot stack them because you can either have them in in your accessory or in your weapons I'm not gonna talk about those because again you cannot stack those so starting with um, refreshing work this one is the one that when when you get hit five times it reduces the the cooldown I don't know how good this one is it, it, in my opinion it's it's my least favorable of all of the three cooldown reduction ones because First of all, it doesn't give you that much cooldown reduction for being hit five times, in my opinion. Uh, the other ones give you more cooldown reduction and you don't have to even get hit at all. So I don't know why this one, is, it's even there. I wouldn't see any time of scenario where this one will be a great because it, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't trigger from damage over time. Now, if it triggered from damage over time, then I can see that being at least viable because... If you get hit five times by something that is not a damage over time, you either most likely dead or fucking halfway through your HP. And why would you want to have some, you know, something take into effect when you're already either almost dead or halfway through your health? So that's why I think refreshing word is it's 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 doo doo. Don't use this uh, unless you you find a way to use it that I, I haven't figured out yet. Uh, but as a stand, and I, I recommend don't don't use it. Stay away from it. Uh, I would put it like I said on doo doo D, D tier. I would put it. Uh, I'm not even gonna put an F tier, but that one that one belongs there. Then we're gonna go into refreshing evasion. This one is good. Refreshing evasion. It's it's good. It's the one that every time that you exit the dodge animation, it will reduce the cooldown up to I think it's uh, 0.9%. If you are a class that you know you're constantly dodging, this one it will be good to stack. Uh, it's not a, it's not a bad stackable one. The only thing that I see, uh, you know, that I it, it doesn't it doesn't make me go, you know, with refreshing with refreshing evasion is the fact that you have to evade, right? If you're not evading basically you're not taking advantage of that perk and that perk is completely useless so if you're getting gang banged by a bunch of dudes for for three seconds and you're not able to evade because you're in a full cc chain that means that none of your cooldowns will be going down why because you cannot dodge um but if you're in the back line and you're constantly hitting people and you're constantly dodging and even if you're in the if you find yourself in the front line dodging a lot and not getting hit as often uh, I will re probably refresh innovation will be good. But again, like I said, if you're in the front line, I will probably recommend that you, you, you maybe want to prioritize uh, resilient instead of going with, you know, a cooldown reduction uh, a perk. Uh, but remember the cooldown reduction perks, you can have them on your shield, on your armor, on, on your amulet, you know, on your rings, on your earrings. You can have it in all these places. Uh, so you can play a little bit more with that you could have your full-on resilient on your gear and then you can have you know some of the cooldown reductions on your accessories uh, but again this one it's definitely uh, a to b tier yeah i don't know exactly where to put it right there uh because it's good but you have to be doing something in order for that to to work uh if you mix it with with something like uh you know like uh, gambit here that you know you have 15 percent more damage while your stamina is not full it's it's good it's kind of good but at the same time you know when i'm using my fire staff i dodge one two and then i dodge again one two so about every two three seconds i'm dodging and that is you know a max like efficiency realistically we don't we don't dodge you know every time that oh that we have to dodge because sometimes we're either fighting sometimes we're running and the other thing is that uh, if you dodge twice, it doesn't register as twice the cooldown going down. It only it only registers as as uh, as, as one perk, and it's, it's the same thing uh, with with your mana. If you know you know how when you have uh, uh, is it 200, 200 constitution, not constitution. When you have two hundred, um, yeah, 10, 10 mana after every dodge. Uh, here you see I dodge and I get 10 mana but it has a delay meaning that if you dodge twice or three times it doesn't give you 30% of the mana it's only gonna give you 10% mana because it only register one dodge after every so often seconds right like if I were to 
here. Let me waste all my mana, right? I have to do it this way. One, wait for the mana to go up, go again for the game to register that I need it, that I did another dodge. If I do this three times, it only gives me 10% of my mana and it will only register that you jump as one of the refreshing evasions. So that's why I also say that, you know, it's not as good as it could be, as it could potentially be. And that's why I'm not putting it, you know, in the S tier. And then I'm going to talk to my all time favorite. I mentioned that in my previous video, I'm going to talk about it again. By far, I think if you are a spamming ability class, you, go, you, you should go refreshing as the one that you stack the most. Again, you can do your mix and, and your stuff, but if you're gonna put any sort of cooldown reduction, or if you don't if you don't get hit by, by a lot of people and you don't want resilient, or if you don't get CC chain a lot and you don't want freedom, then you should go refreshing. Because refreshing, it reduces your cooldown all the time. As long as you just alive, it will reduce your max cooldowns by 2.8 seconds, you know? And it's not like your cooldowns are going faster. It's just that cooldown of your abilities are shorter. Instead of being those 30 second cooldown, it goes down dramatically. I can show you here, uh, my, my, my Ice Rain has a, a base cooldown of 30 seconds, but thanks to my cooldown reduction, it's only 25 seconds. Guys and girls, that is five seconds. You know how long is five seconds? It's very long. In five seconds, you get killed at least three, three to four times. Five seconds is a long time. And you will have to dodge so many times for you to get down five seconds if you were using Refresh Innovation. And that's why I think Refreshing by far takes the cake when, it's, when you talk about stacking, uh, you know, the stacking uh, uh, perk that you want to stack in, in your, you know, in your accessories. And if you're in your in your armor, if you don't have that resilient vigor or freedom, whatever you want to do there. And then, like I said before, if you want, if you do DPS, you, if you do damage, then please go with critical in your ring, and please go with some sort of crit or or you know again, it's your playstyle. But if you like crit, again, weapon it's almost mandatory. Ring it's always mandatory. All right, now we're uh, we're done talking about stackables and non-stackable perks. Let's talk about gems. For starters, all gems are stackable. We have the log gems, we have the physical protection, we have the magical protection, we have all of the specific element protection and all of the specific physical damage protections. Um, I did the test. I, I, I tested it yesterday before pulling out, the, you know, making this video because I wanted to be as correct as I wanted to be. And I, I have my full gear uh, of, of medium armor here with the, you know, some, some light pieces and, and some heavy pieces because I like to keep it, you know, up here in the utmost of, of medium because I want to have the, the most amount of armor as I possibly can and magic resistance w and while keeping my hop and my, uh, 10% increased damage and 10%, uh, increase on, on crowd control, right? So I did the testing yesterday and I, and with my full medium gear, stack with onyx which is physical work physical damage absorption and at a 1200 of physical uh protection um i i was i was dueling this person and we did you know a lot of damage testing and he was hitting me constantly and and i took some numbers down and and then i put a gear a full heavy gear that had over 300 more physical resistance but he had zero physical war right it has zero onyx it was just straight up heavy armor with physical protection and that one had like i said 300 more physical armor than this one the person was hitting me with a full physical weapon it was no element added to it because i wanted to only test physical damage and with that full heavy gear i was taking uh way more damage that went that with my medium gear stacked with onyx with that being said, that proves that stacking gems 100% works. It's it's not like stacking gem is bog. That's a myth. If you stack your gems, you're going to get the benefit of all of those gem stacks. Um, if you're having problem with, with magic damage, uh, I would recommend you go uh, uh, full magic resistance or a mix of both 
And again, if you're struggling with physical damage, then you should go with physical ward, which is Onyx. And regardless of your build, you know, uh, this thing here is, are gonna help. Uh, re remember guys, you know, the talent trees, it's very important because the talent trees here, we pick which abilities we are gonna play with, right? Here we pick, all right, this is the class that I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be a close range mage or I'm gonna be a long range mage. Or if you, you know, if you're a musket player, if you pick this ability here, you're like, I'm gonna be a long range musket, right? Or if I pick this one, I'm gonna be a more of a clo close range musket, right? So the talent tree is extremely important because this is what defines what class you are, right? But the perks and the gems define how you play that class. Like you could be a melee mage full cooldown reduction and you will be spamming abilities or you could be a melee range full resilient you know in every single one of your pieces and full stack with onyx and you know for physical protection and now you are a mage with way in full on heavy gear there in the front line just because the way that you chose your perks and the way that you chose your gems they dictate how you play your class the talent trees will dictate what class you play the perks and gems will dictate how you play your class. If you are a person that is super aggressive, then you want some protection. If you're a person that stays more in the back, then you want more cooldown reduction. If you're struggling against certain elements, then you go with that protection. You see, this here, the gems are here for your use to to you know for to make you a better player, to to fill in the gap where you're the most you know weak or to strengthen whatever is your your fort you know to to make you even a better a better player as for the weapon gems again these are situational these are whatever your play style is um i'm i'm not gonna go too too much into detail about those maybe for another video which one will be the best gems for you to wear um uh so that's why i'm saying if you're wearing fire staff uh, i'm gonna go ahead and say that this one is probably one of the best and if you're wearing Ice Gauntlet, this one is probably one of the best. Um, if you have your lock gear, then you should full you should have your full on, uh, you know, pristine pearls and have decked on on pearls in every single one of your lock gears because, like I said, you can stack those gems and you can stack uh, the lock perk. The lock perk is also stackable, guys. Uh, so the the more lock you have, the better. Um, and I think. Uh, I think that's it. I, I think I covered it all. Um, thank you for watching. And uh, I, I received so much, you know, support from the last video. I, I will never, I never in my wildest dream, I thought that <laughs> my first video was going to reach more than 500 views. It totally got me by surprise. I'm extremely humble and, and happy uh, to, to keep on making these videos. If you, if you guys and girls keep on watching it. And uh, with that being said, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for watching and uh, until the next one. Bye-bye.